Welcome friends to another week's Q&A joined by my lovely wife Lucy. Hi guys. Lucy will be asking me more of your questions from Instagram. Let's do the next All one. Alright, the next one is by mind to expansion and his question is which genetic test would you recommend? Thank you and gra greetings from DE. DE, that's Germany. Well, greetings to Germany. I love Germany very much. I spent a lot of my life there actually, a lot of summers. Um, wonder where you're from? You could tell us in your next question. Uh, I like to go to... Uh, actually, I also have a great-grandfather who was from Hamburg, where hamburgers were yeah. created. Uh, and I'm proud of that. I like hamburgers, although I can't eat them anymore. But <laughs> that is wrap ones. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, well, actually, originally hamburgers didn't have any bread on them. They were just like meat, beef patties. But anyway, this is a history thing. They don't want to know about history. So, so um, he was asking about genetic tests. Mm -hmm. So my recommendations, people, people like to use a variety of different, uh, there's, there, okay, first of all, there's two concerns when you want to do your genes. Uh, there's two concerns. Well, there's three concerns, really. One is what the genetic uh, testing company, how they codify the SNP, single nucleotide polymorphisms. So there is, there is no universal system yet. Some smaller companies will follow 23andMe's method. Some companies will follow, for example, Ancestry's method. They're different. So, for example, if somebody's used to using 23andMe to go through SMPs, and by the way, most of the academic literature follows 20, uh, follows uh, 20, uh, 23andMe's uh, coding. Not follows them, but 23andMe follows them. But Ancestry uses different codes, codes sometimes. So, you may find that you, you have just genotyped, because Ancestry doesn't do your whole genome, but genotyped. By the way, genotyping means they don't sequence your entire genome. They choose specific polymorphisms that they're interested in. So it's, they don't actually have your whole genome. So you can't research everything. So anyway, the point is one thing comes down to how they label uh, the SMPs. Another thing comes down to how they analyze your genes for you. I mean, the only reason that I do genetic analysis is because most of these companies have inferior analysis. Mm -hmm. but why is it inferior? There's a variety of reasons. You know, one of them is because they don't want to tell you bad news. One of them is because uh, some of the smaller companies, they just don't have the resources to really be on top of the academic literature and they're not that obsessed with it. 23andMe does have the resources and they are a research company. But in, in 23andMe's case, to be honest with you, I think the majority of the reasons they don't want to tell you any bad information unless, yeah, unless it's really, really bad. They'll tell you if you have an autosomal disease inherited. In, inherited. They won't really tell you anything else. They'll tell you if you have an APOE4 for Alzheimer's. They'll tell you if you, for some reason, they choose to tell you if you're going to go blind, uh, age-related age macular degeneration, but they don't use all the SMPs that are useful. Mm -hmm. So it's quite, I don't know, it's, it's questionable. But the point is, if you are looking to not have your genes analyzed, you might want to go with a company that has more information in it. Uh, although it'll always be inferior. It'll always be far inferior to my report, for example. That's a 50-page detailed report. And, um, and by the way, the 50-page report is not all the genes I, I check or the polymorphisms I check. It's the ones I choose to report to you. There's a lot more that I check, which is why it takes me so damn long, you know. It, takes, it really takes me a long time. So I'm trying to find ways to make it more efficient, but it takes me a long time. Either way, it's going to take me at least 10 hours, even if I use the computer program, because I write the thing myself and I have to think about how your polymorphisms work together to come up with my opinions. So anyway. The third thing is, uh, that's a concern is uh, which, gene, which polymorphisms they choose to genotype. Mm -hmm. So Ancestry, for example, will genotype some polymorphisms that 23 won't. Really? Yeah. So, but 23 and me, in my opinion, so to answer your question, if you're going to genotype, which means not do the whole genome, but genotype, which is much cheaper, which is what I would recommend in the beginning, unless you have, unless you're very, very wealthy. If you're very, very wealthy, then you can sequence your whole genome. And if you're going to do that, I would go with Veritas. Veritas is a great company. It costs you about $800. You sequence the whole genome. Uh, if you can do that, then you should definitely uh, have someone like me, of which there are nearly, there are very few people, that will uh, have someone pay them the amount and that will take them to go through your whole genome and give you a very detailed analysis according to the cutting edge research academic papers. Now, if you're gonna go sequence your whole genome and you won't pay someone for that, you're, you're not spending your money correctly. Yeah. Because you can get a lot more from, from 23andMe being analyzed than you can from just doing the Veritas, mm -hmm. for example. You're not gonna learn that much unless you are 
an expert in genome-wide association studies, which you may be in, the, in that case, you don't need anyone to analyze anything for you, you study it yourself. But if you're gonna genotype the stuff, I would go with 23andMe. 23andMe covers about, a, between, depending on the year, it covers about 60 to 80% of the SMPs I'm interested in. To be honest, of the most important SMPs, it probably covers 90%. Okay. Like for example, growth hormone receptor, I don't like, the SMPs that they chose to, to, to go for. I mean, some receptors, they, they, they go through random SMPs. I don't even know why they chose those SMPs. There isn't even clinical research for those SMPs. I don't know why they chose them. It doesn't really make sense. Um, it's a questionable thing. And another thing I'll say about 23andMe, when we're talking about how they reveal things, you know, there was some scandals a couple of years ago mm -hmm. where employees left 23andMe and they were telling people, you know, 23andMe is intentionally misguiding people on where their ancestry is come, coming yeah. from. So 23andMe and the other companies, they have this thing where they'll, for your ancestry, they'll uh, segment... Oh, my dog is having nightmares apparently. I, just, I was like, what's that sound? <laughs> anyway, so they'll, they'll segment your, uh, your ancestry, like you're 20% 20, 20 Northern European, you're 30% you're yeah. South, uh, Southwestern. You spice it up a little bit. So. The, yeah, well, that's based on, on what's called um, like, they have data sets, basically how they do that, just for you guys to know, because you might be interested. They have data sets, which are very small, on different countries. So they have data sets from France, they have data sets from Germany, they have data sets from uh, China, different parts of China. And what they'll do is, they'll compare your genome with those data sets and see how long the biggest exact uh, block in common that you have with those people. Mm. Okay, so these things, are um, uh, measured in centimorgans. So the longer, like if you have over 20 centimorgan block of your DNA in common with a certain group, they say, oh, he's definitely related to that group. If you have very small amounts, it could be by randomness that you're similar to them. So as you can imagine, there's a lot of leeway in how much you can, because you can, you can, I could tell you that you're Aboriginal Australian, you're gonna have some centimorgans in common. It's my choice how much I'm gonna say you need to have in common for me to say that you're from mm. them. So 23andMe was doing this a lot with Native American genetics and, and African Amer American genetics. So they were telling people that, oh, you have 1% African DNA, when really the, that 1% was coming down to very tiny centimorgans that were mm -hmm. not really, but they were really doing this with American Indians. So some employees left 23andMe and they talked to the news outlets and said, you know, they're doing this just to sell, sell, sell stuff. In general, these things are very inaccurate because they have very small reference populations. Now, just for you guys to know, if, you, if you're more interested in your ancestry, Ancestry, the company, has the largest database, which is double the size of 23andMe. 23andMe has about double or triple the size of Family Tree DNA. Family Tree DNA has the most accurate paternal and maternal identification. What does that mean? That means you have what's called a, um, you have a haplogroup that comes from your father's 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 father line on your Y chromosome and you have a maternal haplogroup that comes in your mitochondrial DNA from your mother's 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 mother. Family tree DNA does the most accurate uh, research into these lines. Mm. Completely way beyond 23andMe and Ancestry DNA. In fact, it, to, pay, to get the most detailed one, you have to pay about $800. I used to be a researcher at Family Tree DNA. I had my own research group there. Uh, it's a wonderful organization. Completely useless for health, really, like compared to the others. And the database is very small, but the science is top notch. Whereas 23andMe is a great science organization, has a much lower database than the Ancestry uh, organization. Ancestry organization, the advantage of that is that they have a very active family tree, uh, user, user based family tree system where you can quickly find out people, first of all, because of their larger database, you'll find more relatives. Mm -hmm. Second of all, a lot of these relatives have detailed family trees on the actual website that you can then connect to and you can absorb all their information in a, in a very nice program to connect it to. So there's advantages to all of them. But if you're doing this for health reasons, I would go with 23andMe unless you're very rich, in which case I would go with Veritas DNA. Interesting, mm. thank you. Thank you guys for asking your questions and we'll see you next time. Thank you.